roughly 3,000 miles off the eastern coast of New Zealand, 2,000 miles north of Antarctica, and 2.5 and miles under the surface of the Pacific Ocean, is one of the most isolated cemeteries on the planet. It's not a cemetery for people, however. Rather, for the final remnants of the planet's space agency's decommissioned projects. This extremely isolated point is technically called the Oceanic Pole of Inaccessibility, the point on Earth farthest away from any landmass. Over the course of the 50 years that we've been dumping our space junk here, there have been 263 spacecraft laid to rest in this watery grave. This spot was chosen for obvious reasons, as it greatly reduces the risk of human casualties from scorching hot space debris. But we haven't been sending satellites to space for very long, and the ones we have decommissioned and brought down have been small enough to burn up a lot as they enter Earth's atmosphere. But there's a big problem. A problem roughly the size of a football field and weighing around 500 tons. The International Space Station has enabled one giant leap for science and collaboration across mankind, involving five different space agencies including the US, Russia, Europe, China, and Japan. The modules and parts of the ISS have been built progressively by many different countries, only coming into contact for the first time in space. The monumental conglomerate structure now stretches across the sky and is the largest human-made object in space. It is visible to the naked eye from Earth while it completes its 16 daily orbits, passing 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. In all, the construction of the space station required 42 separate launches to construct according to NASA. Inside, there is as much livable volume as a six-bedroom house. Quote, We built the largest peacetime engineering project ever, and by building pieces of an overall spacecraft that never actually saw each other or touched each other until they got into orbit said Christian Mater, director of in-space manufacturing and research for Axiom. Research in the microgravity environment of the International Space Station has yielded breakthroughs in drug discovery, vaccine development, and medical treatments in the last decade. The ISS has also helped monitor the Earth's ecosystems and natural disasters in real time. It's used to test future spacecraft technology and to study health effects of long-term spaceflight for the possibility of future human exploration of the solar system. Despite the onboard research gaining momentum, NASA has noticed signs of infrastructure and components slowing down. For every orbit around the Earth, the ISS gets scorched by solar radiation on one side and freezes on the other. These thermal extremes cause cyclic expansion and contraction which wears the material. Space radiation chars the transparent glass of the solar cells which are used to power the station, and repeated docking and undocking causes gradual structure degradation. The rise of flying space junk also poses unplanned and catastrophic risks of destruction, as in 2016, a flyaway speck of paint chipped a window on the station. The craziest part is, the ISS should have already been brought down. When it was originally sent into orbit in 1998, it was only commissioned with a 15-year lifespan. Yet, again and again, its time above the Earth was extended including just recently when the Biden administration announced that they would extend its decommissioning until 2031. That means it will have over doubled its intended life in space. Although NASA has committed itself to maintaining the station through 2030, its partner organizations are yet to officially sign on, meaning the exact time of deorbiting will be just as much about politics as it is about engineering. But if degradation or unplanned damage occurs before the official decommissioning, a free-falling ISS poses serious dangers. In 1979, NASA's Skylab station wasn't refueled in time and came crashing down into the Earth, scattering chunks across Australia. While no one was harmed, this led to reforms and Design for Demise guidelines. Design for Demise is an important principle for the engineering of satellites and other orbiting space infrastructure. Objects that fall freely from orbit must disintegrate into tiny pieces to make sure they don't pose a danger to the people on the ground. The ISS is too large to satisfy the Design for Demise principle, which is why it needs special operations to deorbit it. In the planned controlled deorbit operation for the ISS, newly built modules will first detach from the main structure and remain in orbit to eventually recombine as parts of future space stations. The ISS will then be gently decelerated by onboard thrusters, causing its orbiting altitude to gradually lower over the course of a few months. 
The remaining descent will be more rapid, but controlled by a series of spacecraft sent to attach and steer the structure as it begins to plummet towards Earth. As it re-enters the atmosphere, the majority of the structure will burn away. The remaining mass should remain on a targeted trajectory to its deep sea resting place. This map shows the distribution of the wreckage in the spacecraft cemetery from each space agency. This area of the Pacific is the final resting place for hundreds of decommissioned spacecraft, but because scientists can't precisely target where a spacecraft will go down, many of the circles overlap. The spacecraft cemetery's most famous resident is Mir, the 142-ton Russian space station. Mir was decommissioned in 2001 and subsequently sent into what is called orbital decay. Other spacecraft in the graveyard range from rocket secondary payloads to spy satellites, small Russian space stations, fuel tanks, and hundreds of cargo ships that carried supplies to astronauts in orbit. Russian objects far outnumbered every other space agency when it comes to the Pacific Ocean. There are more than 190 Russian objects alone. The US is next with 52 objects, then Europe with 8, and Japan with 6, and finally SpaceX which dropped its second stage there in 2014. Each line here is an individual satellite or space debris in the dates in which they fell to Earth. Russia, shown in blue, has dropped the majority of the objects into the spacecraft graveyard, but in recent years the US, in red, has been catching up. The scientists who have planned the re-entry of the ISS acknowledge that the entry angle for this maneuver will have to be extremely precise, but hopefully will result in all surviving debris ending up in the Pacific Ocean. But if the space station's going down, what's going to replace it? Before complete deorbit in 2031, the ISS will first undergo a transition phase to sustain the crucial scientific research currently being conducted, and to form the basis of a new industry in space. Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin has announced plans to replace the ISS with the company's privately operated space stations. Other key players include Northrop Grumman and Axiom Space partnered with SpaceX who have a contract to start building modules off the existing ISS as early as 2024. As NASA says on their website, the private sector is technically and financially capable of developing and operating commercial low Earth orbit destinations with NASA's assistance. We look forward to sharing our lessons learned and operations experience with the private sector to help them develop safe, reliable, and cost-effective destinations in space. There's also plans for a Russian space station which is likely to use modules detached from the existing ISS, and meanwhile China launched the first module of their independent Tiangong space station last year, and plans to complete its expansion in the coming months. So it appears the age of the multinational cooperation in space is coming to a close, and the age of multi-corporate cooperation has its start date. The best we can hope for is that, when it is time for the International Space Station's curtain call, it's a safe descent to the bottom of the ocean. Thank you for watching Learn Something New. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more. Thanks again, and as always, see you next time.